see there's a security camera right there. <laughs> We are finally gonna do it, stealth camping at YYZ, which is Pearson International Airport, the Toronto Airport, because one of our subscribers has asked me twice in two different letters, you know it, Vincent from San Diego. Uh, he sent me a, a letter at least a year ago, and then he sent me the, the newer one uh, within the last month, uh, asking me to do the uh, Orangeville, and he also asked me to do the uh, stealth camping at the airport once again. So we are going to uh, probably park in Terminal 3 parking. And uh, departures, arrivals, it doesn't matter. I'm guessing arrivals would probably be our best bet. Um, and we're just going to uh, go through Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. Sorry, Terminal 1 and Terminal 3. We don't have a Terminal 2. Uh, not sure why. If you know that answer, leave a comment in the comment section below. I've never really asked that question. But uh, Terminal 1 was the original one. Then they built Terminal 3. And then they rebuilt Terminal 1. Uh, and so they're both kind of state-of-the-art airports. Um, so, yeah, let's find a parking spot. And then we'll go through the arrivals and departures area. We'll be able to go, obviously, into past security. And that's where all the bigger, better restaurants are. But we'll show you around Terminal 1 um, again and Terminal 3. That's why I don't want to miss my parking. Oh, sh that guy's coming up fast. Parking, rentals, don't want rentals, just want regular parking. Okay. A lot of preferred parking here. When we're staying, and the Sheridan is. Uh, in this area too. Got our ticket. We will be seeing how much it costs to park here overnight. See if it's cheaper than camping at a provincial park. So uh, I'm going to try and get closer to the uh, it's, got, it's kind of dark in here, I apologize. But uh, we're gonna try and get as close to the hotel as possible, just so we have easy access to uh, get into the terminal. Parking, Sheridan Hotel. If we get one of those juicy parking spots, I'm gonna be so happy. I'm gonna also try and park as close to a wall on this right side as I can. Terminal is right there. So if we can find a spot, we might have to move the vehicle a couple times. This guy parked a little bit too close and there's no actual space in there. Probably did it on purpose. Not cool, dude. Not cool at all. Taking up two spots. There's a guy walking, and it's possible that he's going to uh, go to a car and leave, which will leave us a spot. Yeah, I think he's going. And he's by a wall. That is awesome. Yes. Oh my goodness, he's pulling out. He's pulling out, he's trying. He's trying hard. He's coming this way. I'm gonna steal his spot, man. That's freaking awesome. That is fantastic. You got it, buddy. You got it. Move along, move along. Unbelievable. <laughs> this is awesome. Right beside a huge truck. Let's see if we can squeeze in here. Oh, it's tight. It's tight, dude. <laughs> My goodness. Talk about a tight squeeze. Holy cow. We won't be able to actually get into the side of the vehicle. Well, that's how tight we are to that guy. 
and then over here we're right up against the wall won't be able to actually get in and out of the side door we'll have to crawl through the driver's door but again trying to get out of here that's going to be brutal maybe we should just give it a shot and see how it goes and then maybe move the car again you know what it's just not worth it it's just not worth it it's such a tight spot the truck is like over the line just a little bit and so he's making that that spot really tight and i really don't want to have to deal with that i really don't so let's try for another one let's hope and hope we can only hope <laughs> nail the spot just happened to turn down this tiny little alleyway and here's a spot right here I just hope people on both sides are not coming home for a couple more days no we don't have to worry about it perfect done let's get something to eat great parking spot dude yeah, it's not a high traffic area because the, the, the lane stops here. And I think the Sheridan is just over here. Good find. We just have to remember where we park. Thank you for choosing Toronto Pearson. You're welcome. So I'm hoping I'm in the right direction. Yeah, there's a walkway or elevators over here so we've got elevators we got stairs let's see how close we are the terminal's right there there's a walkway bridge one story down there you go big sign saying terminal one level down yeah it would have been cool to get a parking spot here but i think we need to do some stairs today they got like a monorail that takes you from the discount parking which is way over there and it'll take you to terminal one and then terminal or oh, this is terminal three and then over to terminal one we're going to check out terminal three first and there's the sheridan carol and i stayed there one time it was great because you just got dressed in your shorts and t-shirt and just walked across the uh, nice warm walkway into the airport and you didn't have to worry about walking outside. And it's the middle of winter and we're going to uh, tropical paradise. This is the first time I've ever been to the airport and not actually traveling somewhere or picking somebody up or dropping somebody off. It's just crazy. Oh, there's a Wendy's here. Nice. We'll be eating there for sure. And they're open today until 11 p.m. Cool. That'll come in handy. So we are in departures, and this is uh, the end of Terminal 3. Let's walk to the other end. Just to check out all the different uh, places we have, options we have to eat. But again, most of the stuff, all the big restaurants and cool restaurants, are past security, and we can't get through security. Here's a place called Six and Sunday. They got like drinks and snacks and Canada apparel. Got foreign exchange. If you could go anywhere on that board, where would you go? Hmm. If I could go anywhere on that board for free, just jump on a plane and go, I'm thinking maybe Hong Kong. That would be pretty cool. Never been. We also have a freshie. And they've got uh, healthier options, sandwiches and, s and salad bowls. There's the police. Might be seeing them later. Oh, and here's a Starbucks. Lots of great coffee options and food. Here's another little convenience store, basically. Drinks, junk food. Uh, and we're pretty much at the end of this terminal. 
can buy more luggage if you want. Yeah, so this is the uh, end of Terminal 3 departures and Terminal 1's over there. But let's go downstairs and see what they have to offer in arrivals. Oh, that's cool. They'll shrink wrap your luggage. That's pretty cool. It won't get soaked. All right. Arrivals is down one level. Are you kidding? They have a smokes poutinery in the airport? What the hey? Unbelievable. We have to have a smokes poutinery. Oh my goodness. What is going on? <laughs> this is awesome. I had no idea. Let's grab one. Why not? First meal of the day. Hey, how you doing? All right. How long have you guys been in the airport? Drunk? Yeah. Uh, I think more than seven years. Seven years? I had no yeah. idea. Let's let's try your uh, chicken bacon ranch, small, please. I am in such. Yeah, that's perfect. That large, too much. <laughs> let's grab uh, water for now. Oh so, yeah, there's terminal one way over there and we'll go over there later see what they have to offer but until then we're going to be right here by the smoke's poutinery truck thank you sir oh excellent thank you so i don't think this is going to need any condiments whatsoever but they do have vinegar salt ketchup more ketchup and Mr. Smokes himself. I think we need napkin for sure. Maybe two. All right, let's go eat. That is fantastic, man. Fantastic. All right, guys, going in for the extreme close-up of this chicken bacon ranch. Look at all that bacon. They did not cheap out on how much bacon they gave you. It looks like it's nice and crispy bacon. And then you can see the chunks of chicken just under that. And of course, all your ranch under that is big beautiful fries like usual smokes does not disappoint let me hit hit that focus button there we go we got lots of that hot thick gravy all right smokes poutinery can't believe you're in the airport I never knew i looked i looked up all the restaurants that were in this area i didn't see smokes that is a fantastic poutine Cheese curd. I'm starting our day off right. Oh, it's steaming. It's so hot. I'm so excited. <laughs> I remember back in the 70s when there's only one airport here, not two terminals, just one terminal. You could drop off your family and there'd be restaurants in the departure area and you would sit down with your family and, and have breakfast or lunch or dinner with them and then see them off and then you go stand on the top of the parking garage and watch the planes take off. I don't think you can see the runway from the top of the parking garage here anymore. When you get to the bottom, <laughs> it's so hot. Still have lots to go. Oh yeah. Ooey gooey mess. The chicken's pretty good. I'm enjoying that. All done my smokes poutine. That was fabulous. Let's go check out to see what else is going on. This is your international arrivals. And there's the big YYZ sign. Welcome you to Toronto. I love that sign, it's pretty cool. There's another store in the ever popular washroom when you get off a plane. Coke machine, huge Coke machine. Currency exchange. And of course, the main thing you want when you land in Toronto, Tim Hortons coffee. 
and another Coke machine with some chips and stuff. Arrivals was down here. And uh, this area, they have uh, where you can buy your Presto plans to get on the GO train and, and bus. So it's the TTC GO train. And that's our system. And it tells you when all the buses and trains come. And there's the ever popular subway. And you could smell it all the way down there. They're obviously baking some fresh bread right now. And we've reached the other end of the terminal. And uh, that's baggage claim. Hopefully your baggage claim isn't all backed up like some of the other places I've heard about. Bags just lying around, nobody picking them up. Craziness. Train to city and then also to terminal one. I'm guessing we have to go up another one. Let's cross to the Sheridan and then go up a level. Yeah, we need to be up there. Is it safe to cross? I think so. Maybe. Maybe we got to move fast. It's not very congested here. It's Monday afternoon. Oh, down there. Look at that. Jeez. That's more like an airport. I think Carol and I stayed here one one night. Had a couple drinks here and some food. It was pretty good. Just going out to the parking area. Just to see if we can see the airplanes taking off. I don't think so. Yeah, I think all the uh, the buildings are in the way of the actual runways. You'd only be able to see the plane after it took off. But yeah, that's the Sheridan. We made a mistake when we stayed here and we parked up here. I thought it was a good parking spot. When we came back, our car was covered in snow and all I had was running shoes on and my shorts and my t-shirt. It was a bad, bad idea. Nice lounging area. I think we have to go up one. to make sure we don't get on the one to the city. Just a terminal one. Just missed the train. We you are here, terminal three, we need to go one more over. And you can see planes taxiing and stuff. At the end of this area, there are plantain chips, one of my favorite chips right there, Miss Vicky's Jalapeno. If you visit Canada, make sure you grab a bag of those because they are amazing. Then we have beverages, smart water. There's terminal one right there. Here comes the automated train. Toronto Pearson. off the train there and you can see all the more airplanes taxiing out there's a klm and there's terminal one air canada flies primarily out of here other airlines do as well but if you want to fly air canada you always come to terminal one all right let's go see what terminal one's got to offer I've seen busier airports. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's a booster juice over here. I didn't know about that one. There's a CIBC banking. Oh, a Tim Hortons down there. And there's some other food thing. Oh, it's a convenience store kind of thing happening. I just realized it's a 7-Eleven. I just walked around here and came from this side and I could just tell it's a 7-Eleven. Look at the food. Let's go check it out.
Yeah, it's a full-on 7-Eleven. You got your coffee machines, your big gulp stuff around the corner here. Brownie bites. Oh, we got that milkshake machine. Smoothies and shakes. That's pretty cool. They've got the slushy machines, all the drink machines, coffee bar. And there's all your hot food. Taquitos. Taquitos. Hot dogs. Nachos. Chili. Cheese. French fries. Chicken. Chicken wings. Pizza slices. And that's domestic arrivals. And of course, you're greeted by a Tim Hortons right here. And even on an express line, which I think is very important. Another YYZ sign welcoming people to Toronto. And of course over here is another Starbucks and a Subway. And this is international arrivals. So if you're coming to visit us here in Toronto, or when you come through, go that way and you can get your first Tim Hortons coffee down there. And of course you got another Starbucks. And here's a place called Landed, if you want to drink while you're waiting. And up there is the subway. Let's go check, see if there's anything else up there. There's another uh, relay convenience store and some more uh, vending machines. Yeah, there's the subway. And over here is a Good Life Fitness. I knew they had one, but I couldn't remember where in the airport it was. So people that are on like long layovers just want to work out. And you have a good life fitness pass. And of course, there's only one person working out, working off that Christmas turkey still. But there's a good life fitness right in the airport. It'll be interesting to know, uh, to see how many Canadians or Torontonians knew about all the stuff that I'm showing you guys today. Like, I had no idea that there was a 7-Eleven in here. Let's go check out departures. One level up. Somebody's saving on electricity. It's kind of dark in here. It's scary. That's all the uh, Air Canada stuff. And here's the gateway to the United States. So you go through there, use your Nexus Pass. Actually, you go around the corner for the Nexus. This is for uh, regular people with their, just their passport. So I asked the lady down there, is it possible to come to an airport like a bus terminal and buy a ticket to somewhere? And apparently, uh, aisle 15, there's a white courtesy phone. And if you pick that up, I guess you can dial any one of these airlines and purchase a ticket and a flight so let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see me do that. Uh, maybe we'll fly to somewhere in Canada. Maybe we'll fly to somewhere in the United States just for like a day. And we'll bring like a, just a regular backpack with just a change of clothes, toothbrush. And that's it. And so that would be, that'd be so cool. I've always wanted to do that. Just drive to an airport, buy a ticket and fly somewhere. That'd be so neat. So you guys pick the airline, pick the place you want me to go. And we'll do it. And we'll make an epic video doing it. What am I doing? Like a, like the longest flight. I'm not sure what the longest flight is. It's got to be like 13 hours. And I've done one of those to Japan. I wonder if there's anything longer than that. More Air Canada. Gates D. And this is the other end of Terminal 1. That's the end. And that's where all the first class business people go. And of course there is another replay uh, convenience store. Some Air Canada flights getting ready to go. It's a pretty cool airport. I like it. Let's go back down a level. There's that booster juice. I'll see if there's anything down here. Oh, yeah, we already were down here. International arrivals and the uh, Starbucks. 
just went down one more level from International. And this is where you can pick up your Ubers. And it looks like there's a food court. So a Tim Hortons Express, Escape Food Company, Caribbean, and Maple Leaf Diner. It's called the Comfort Zone. And it looks like it's the only thing in this area. I don't see anything else. Hungry? Hmm. So it's a little food court. Cool. Didn't know this existed either. And it's closed. Maple Leaf Diner. Be interesting to know if they actually are open at any period of time. And there's the uh, Caribbean cool little eating area, I guess. Back upstairs by the booster juice. We're gonna zip over to uh, the other side, grab the train back to Terminal 3. Train to Terminal 3. That's all the people waiting for the train to get into the city. Probably taking you down to Union Station, downtown Toronto. A lot of people. grab some Wendy's so that was the uh, Sheridan is that way and if you go past the 6th and Sunday the Wendy's is down this way just in case you're staying at the Sheridan and you have an uh, anchoring for a Wendy's burger bacon portobello mushroom that's what we're doing yeah chicken strips and the gravy yeah. I, I'd love to try that bacon portobello mushroom Humble. just the burger please Thank you. So it's six o'clock, it's seven o'clock. The Leafs face the Islanders. So uh, we'll get back to the van, stealth it out, and uh, watch the hockey game and then go to bed. I'm gonna eat this first. For B, it's eating time. There we go, all stealthed out. This is my spot right there. There's my spot. Bang your head. All right, I can't remember the last time I had one of these Wendy's portobello bacon thingies, but uh, it's a hefty weight there. Gonna munch this down. Somebody's like echoing their voice. Wow, it's a double, woo! Wendy's, square patties, cause they don't cut corners. Got a nice toasted wobbly bun. <laughs> it is so hot. Look how shiny that is. Very shiny bun. Ooh, there's all of our portobello mushrooms, bacon, it's basically a baconator with portobello mushrooms on it, right? Look at the steam and uh, some extra goo, some extra queso maybe. All right, let's bite it. Mmm. So soft and gooey. Mmm, the portobello mushrooms. Very nice flavor. Mmm. Let everybody know in the comments below if you're a mushroom fan, because I love mushrooms. Especially portobello, um, the uh, cremini. Wow, very savory. 
very cheesy very good I'm enjoying that a lot mmm every once in a while I bite into something that's extra salty I can't pinpoint it I don't think it's the mushrooms whatever they did to the mushrooms but look how gooey that is still steaming like crazy It's 13 degrees Celsius in the van right now, so we will be doing well tonight. Fantastic burger. If you love the Baconator and you love mushrooms, give this a shot. It is fantastic. I'm going to mouth this down and then we'll brush our teeth and, and uh, watch the hockey game. Hopefully uh, the Leafs kick butt because my Bills lost last night to a very deserving uh, Cincinnati Bengals. So congratulations to the Bengals. You guys deserve it for sure. You guys did well. All right, let me finish this off. Here's my teeth brushing kit. So I'll get that done in a second. A few people have also asked, what do you do when you need to go to the washroom? Uh, this is, these are my pee jugs. Uh, I know you guys really don't want to talk about that, but people do ask. And I bought these at the dollar store. I think there are three bucks each. I know, it's, I guess it's, not, it's called Dollarama, not the dollar store anymore. So I just put uh, stickers on it so you guys can't see really what's inside. Uh, after every use of these, whether I brush my teeth or use it as a washroom, just for number one, of course, uh, I when I get home, I empty them out and I actually uh, wash them with soap and water so that uh, the next time you open one up, it doesn't stink. You know what I'm saying? I know you didn't really want to talk about that, but people keep asking. So again, I'll just uh, use my water. I got my toothbrush. I got my cup, got my toothpaste, crest, I'll brush up and uh, then we'll hit the hay or we'll watch the game and then hit the hay. Got the Jackery all ready. I forgot to bring my USB, regular USB and so I'll have to use this which is going to drain a little bit quicker than normal but I'm only here for one night so I'm at 92%. Uh, it should last uh, the whole night, no problems. So I'll plug in my phone and my watch and we'll be good to go for the morning, especially after watching that hockey game. Every once in a while, cars go by really slowly. And it sounds like it's security, but uh, it's, it's when they slow down and I guess the, it's just normal people looking for a spot. But if, if security does come by, I'll be ready and make sure I show you guys. Nope. Still safe. It's 7.30 and uh, I think it is 6.9 degrees inside the van. I should have parked maybe a, a spot where sunlight would have come in or some light would have come in. But it's just as dark in here as it was when we parked here yesterday. And uh, you can't tell if it's daytime or not. But uh, yeah, so it's time to get up. All batteries are charged up. I think we should uh, de-stealth a little bit more, and then uh, we'll go inside, 
find that Tim Hortons and uh, grab a coffee and breakfast and then head home. A successful stealth camp, no arrests. I don't know how much it costs to park here overnight, so I guess we'll find out. Uh, if you were to stay at the Sheridan, I think it's like, I don't know, $300 a night kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, I, I can't remember how much the Sheridan costs. It's expensive. Anyway, so let's get going. When I first pulled in here, uh, I'm like, oh, cool. No security cameras, nothing. But there's one literally right so outside my vehicle. And I'm looking right at it. <laughs> That's funny. It didn't seem to matter. All right, let's go. See, there's a security camera right there. Let's go see what kind of day it is. I just asked Siri and it's uh, minus one degree outside. I was trying to figure out how to get out of here from the ground floor this time. Not a whole lot of cars here at 7.30 in the morning. Not a whole lot of flights flying out, I guess. Sounds like the train's going, but I can't see it. Hey, nice sprinter. I smell, I smell marijuana too. Jeez. Somebody's smoking. Maybe that person. Yeah, that person's got a big, a big doobie first thing in the morning. Yeah, a lot of people traveling somewhere. The worst part of traveling right there waiting an hour in line oh there's the lineup that's probably it it's 24 hours too hi, hi large black coffee large black and uh a sausage egg biscuit please 903 thank you yeah just people dropping off people going somewhere today this is the weirdest winter too. Hardly any snow. January 24th, I think today. Let's see if we can get out of this dark and dingy hole. So let's see how much it costs to park here overnight I'm afraid to ask really we found our way out thirty eight bucks take your ticket so thirty eight dollars to camp at airport YYZ uh, that was a fun stealth camp I actually learned a few extra things about the airport that I didn't even know like uh, smoke poutinery that was awesome uh, yeah I'm hoping there's a few things that uh, I showed you around that you might not have known again if you ever come to or fly into Toronto at Pearson uh, that might help you know where your first Tim Hortons coffee will be and uh, probably you don't have to look too far. It's not that complicated. But uh, give you a little road map kind of through video form. Anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you guys watching, commenting, uh, liking our videos, sharing our videos. And uh, I'd like to also thank my channel members for all your monthly support and my supporters over on Patreon. You guys rock. If you want to show your support for me doing these videos just for you, hit over the thumbs up. Ding, 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 ding. But if you're still hungry for more, check out that playlist I dumped down over there, and we'll see you over there. Bring your hunger.